Good morning, Legacy Church. We're so happy to be in the house of the Lord with you today. But remember, this is just a building, and you are the house of the Lord. So we invite you to stand and worship with us this morning. of the Lord and shout out his praise this morning. We are so thankful for that. Let's go to him in prayer. God, we thank you so much for all that you do for us, all that you do through us. God, all that you do in us and for us. We just want to praise you today. We love you in your name. Amen.
In all things, we praise God. In all situations, let us praise Him. I don't want to be afraid every time I face the waves. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to fear the storm just because I hear it roar. I don't want to fear the storm. I don't want to fear the storm. today as a church, right? Yeah, if we ever needed reminded of anything, it's that he's here. He was waiting for us this morning when we walked in the door, and um, we've reassured ourselves and one another that um, he's here. No doubt about it, he's here. Amen? 
Yeah, welcome to Legacy. It's great to worship with you today. It's a great day to be here, the end of July, and um, to be together. It's a wonderful thing. We don't want to take it ever for granted to be able to worship together. Um, I'm Tammy, and I want to share three um, quick ministry opportunities, reminders for us. First of all, this Wednesday night, if you are a 6th through 12th grade girl, um, we are going to meet here for a See Yourself the Way God Sees You youth event. I'm super excited about that. If you have not rsvp today's the day to see me and let me know that you plan to come. Also, on Wednesday night, um, the guys, and by that I mean dudes, will be um, whatever they do at Stars and Strikes, right? That would be bowling and, and laser stuff and everything will be... I'm um, meeting there at Stars and Strikes on 92. And then next Sunday, guys, note this. Next Sunday morning, um, this building, there won't be anybody here. We will have a combined service at our Canton campus on exit 20 off of 575 that starts at 10. And we will have um, combined, we'll be worshiping together with our Canton campus and giving great honor and worship to God. But we're also um, sending off... Um, our pastor Brent and doing a send off and just celebrating all that he has done in ministry over the last 13 years here at Legacy, which is a great, a great deal. Um, also, following that service, we will have a brunch all together. So we're encouraging, because we are um, hiring a caterer, we're encouraging you to RSVP if you have not, so we know how many to plan to feed. Um, that day. So please do that also online. Um, let's continue to worship, shall we? Let's, let's pray together. Thank you, Father, for um, the good news of Jesus Christ and that he's alive and well and he's in this place. And he desires more than anything for us to have a relationship with him. God, that's our prayer for all of us. Before we leave this place, leave this room, that we would know for sure that you have a home in our heart. No matter our age, no matter our situation, you care about us. And um, what, what great reason to celebrate today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. been strong and I've been broken within a moment. I've been faithful and I've been reckless at every bend. I've held everything together and watched the chatter. I stood tall and I have crumbled in the same. I have wrestled and I have trembled toward surrender. Just my heart had drift and drifted home again. Plundered blessing till I've been desperate to find redemption. And every time I turn around, Lord, you're still there. Borrowed breath is 
I mentioned today's kind of a really special day. Sunday's always a special day in my book, but today um, we get to do one of our favorite things here at Legacy Church, and that is to dedicate a little family, dedicate um, specifically Natalie McIntyre. So Natalie, would you bring your mommy and daddy up here? Up here and join, join us for this special occasion. And we also invite family to come and, and take the stage, Legacy Church, this is Natalie McIntyre. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, sunshine. Hi. Good to see you. Thank you. And hi. Hi. Yeah. We want everybody to be seen. You guys are front and center. Not us, right? Okay. And grandparents, welcome. Yeah, this is a big deal. Natalie, I was just singing those songs that God has everything. He doesn't need anything, but he still wants you and he still wants your heart. Yeah, amen. I know that's the desire of your parents for sure. She's a friendly sort. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
you train her to do that this morning? <laughs> yeah, we better get this party started. Yeah. <laughs> you can preach today. <laughs> Blake and Emily, you have a magnificent responsibility and opportunity of leading Natalie spiritually. Today, when you are presenting her to God, even like Mary and Joseph did when they brought Jesus to the temple to be dedicated, with your family and friends gathered around, you and your church family participating, let's agree that we are acknowledging two simple but important facts today. God made this beautiful child. Amen. And she is God's possession. As stewards of this child, Blake and Emily, you have the unique responsibility to, to intentionally raise her in a way that is pleasing to God. Here at Legacy, you hear a lot about Deuteronomy chapter 6. And so this morning, church, would you join us in standing? We're going to read these verses out loud as just a reminder of the call that God has placed upon every parent. And Deuteronomy, specifically chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. And, and Natalie, um, both of your teachers are parents, so we expect you to read right along with us this morning, right? Okay. We read. Ready? Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. You must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home when you're on the road, and when you're going to bed, and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Amen. You may be seated. So we take these scriptures pretty seriously, and thus we are doing this dedication this morning. by teaching Natalie at church, and by modeling a Christ-like -like lifestyle in front of her, will you do a support of what they're already doing at home by saying things like, Natalie, you look so nice today. We're so proud of you. I'm sure that your parents are teaching you to love Jesus, and we see that by how you're acting and by your, how you're smiling. We already saw it today. She just blew us a kiss, which means love reigns at that house, love for God and love for people, the two most important commands. So church, let's be committed to that as we pray today, this prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Father God, Blake have, and, and Emily have declared, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the commitment that they have made. Thank you for the extravagant attention to the details of their family's past, present, and future. Today, we especially thank you for their precious family. Blake, Emily, and Natalie, we, we love them, and they are all gifts from you, God. May they continue to grow to love you, Father, with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. May they continue to enjoy a life full of love and laughter in a home where you, Lord, are loved, honored, and served. We thank you, Father, for this dedication moment where we can all celebrate and commit to this dear family, all for your honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 
You know, while we're standing, we were actually going to do this at the end, but let's go ahead and do it now. We've got three teachers up here. We want all who are teachers, homeschool teachers, public school teachers, private school teachers to remain standing. The rest of you can be seated. We want to acknowledge you today. You're, the teachers go back to work this week. And so we may pray again for them next Sunday in our combined service. But by acknowledging all who teach, we want to have a prayer of dedication for you. And so thank you for teaching up here in the McIntyre family and everyone who is standing as you influence our children and our youth. Let's pray together. Father, whether in public, in the public domain or at home or in private school, wherever, Lord, our folks are teaching, we want to dedicate them today to your honor and your glory, to be your mouthpieces. Lord, we realize that we are somewhat limited at times as, as to what we can say. We can't necessarily preach a sermon every day. But Lord, what you have taught us through your word is preach the sermon. Live out the gospel by how you act. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would empower these teachers with incredible patience, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to know that by how they treat each student, by how they are patient, by how they deal with things like regulations and testing and all these things, by how they deal with that in front of their students, they are actually modeling, modeling a life of Christ. And so we pray a great prayer of dedication upon them. We pray your blessing upon them, God, that they will feel the power of the Holy Spirit alive inside them as they impart the truths of academia and the truths of loving you and each other as their model. And, and we, Lord, we just, we trust you and we thank you for these wonderful teachers. We look around this room and Lord, what great examples of you. And Lord, in a, way, in, a, in a world there's a lot of shaky stuff, may they just exemplify true and pure love and care. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. You may be seated. Amen. It's all you. Let's give it up for baby Natalie. Yeah. Hi, Natalie. One of our favorite ministries here is to be able to meet up with parents and talk about um, this prayer of dedication that we get to have with um, the parents and the baby. It's a blessing, huge blessing. Um, at this time, um, fifth graders and younger, would you meet me in the lobby? And the rest of you are welcome to greet one another. If you're not cool or comfortable with that, please stay seated. The rest of you may stand at this time, and let's greet one another in the name of the Lord. Okay, you may be seated. Good morning, everyone. You may be seated. Or not. Good morning, everyone. If you're watching online, there's a lot of people milling to the sides and so that's what's happening, but we love that. We love that you love to say hello and greet one another in the name of the Lord. You know, that's very, very biblical. We have been on a course of answering questions over the past several months, different questions that we ask, different questions that Christ asks of us. Well, one of the questions that we may ask 
is why do we sing at church? What, what's the big deal? Why do we sing at church? Why do we have a worship band? Why do we have worship leaders and singers and instruments? Why do we sing at church? You know, for as long as I can remember, I associated singing and music with church. Yeah, we did it at school, and I listened to the radio and some rock and roll and country and gospel music and things on the radio, but I associated singing specifically with church. I grew up in the church. My mom played the organ, and, and we... Um, we sang in the choir. My dad sang in a male quartet. We had choirs and groups that sang during our services, soloists. They would sing spiritual songs and, and Christian songs. We did Christmas musicals, Easter musicals, Fourth of July musicals, Christmas Eve children's musical programs. We sang during regular services. We sang during special services. We sang during funerals. We sang during weddings. Music all the time. In fact, if you go uh, past any church, any given Sunday morning or any time they're meeting, you're probably going to run into what? Some music or some singing. In fact, when Tammy and I were um, able to go to New York a few years ago, we happened to go after the first of uh, December during Christmas season, everywhere in downtown New York, Madison Square Garden, Rockefeller Center, everywhere outside of Radio City Music Hall, what did we hear? Singing of Christmas carols on loudspeakers everywhere. And I loved it. That we Here we were in a very... A secular environment with joy to the world, silent night, all of these wonderful carols playing just right on the streets in New York. I agree with you on that. So you're singing already. Thank you, Stephen. I need to pay your son for that. We sing because we have something to express. We sing because the devil hates it when we sing. Martin Luther, who was a theo, the, theo, I'm having trouble with my words. I had trouble during the dedication. I apologize. Hang with me. I'll pull it together. Must be the six miles we hiked with our grandsons yesterday. A little humid um, and a little old. But Martin Luther, who was a theologian, a priest, an author, composer, and a key figure in the Reformation, had many quotes associated with music. I'm going to lay three of them on you throughout the course of this message this morning. Here's one of them. After theology, I give to music the highest place and the greatest honor. Music is one of the fairest and most glorious gifts of God to which Satan is a better enemy. It removes from the heart the weight of sorrow and the fascination of evil thoughts. Singing is actually referred to in the Bible over 200 times, and musical instruments and drums and cymbals and all that referred to many more times even than that. God's people from the Old Testament, way early in the Old Testament, all through the New Testament, God's people sang when they were stressed. They sang when they were under pressure. They sang when they were happy. They sang when they were excited, when they were celebrating victory from a, from a battle. They lifted praise to God for who he is. They acknowledged his presence in their singing. And when words failed, people sang. It's the same today. Oftentimes, we'll break into singing. In fact, we would think about perhaps King David. This is kind of an interesting uh, scenario. King David was, was leading the procession that was bringing to, an, to the ark to a special tent he had prepared. Now, King David was so overwhelmed with the fact that the presence of the Lord, the Ten Commandments which were in the ark, were coming into the place where he had designated for honor that he sang and he danced before the Lord in the streets. He danced before the Lord in front of all the people. He, he wasn't dancing for the people, though. Because he laid aside his royal robes, he put on a simple linen dress that was worn by the priest back then, and he danced, the Bible says, with all his might, and he sang at the top of his lungs. In fact, his wife at the time, Michael, she was like, dude, you made a fool of yourself. And he said, you know what? He said back to her, you know what? I am glad to make a fool of myself for God and praise for his presence in our lives and in the lives of his people. You know, David was overwhelmed with that. And when worshiping in the Old Testament, great care was given to how worship was conducted. In fact, let's look at 2 Chronicles 5, 
this morning, and we can kind of see what's happening. Now, this, under Solomon's reign, they had to move the ark wherever they went, wherever they settled. And so when Solomon built the temple later after King David, Solomon built this temple, and they were going to bring the ark, which contained the Ten Commandments, that's all that was in there, this big ornate ark carried on poles by, by guys that were, had to make sure they didn't touch the ark, Law, another sermon about that. But the Ten Commandments were in this ark, very important to God's people. They were bringing it into the inner sanctuary of the temple, and people were gearing up. I mean, it's like when we start to gear up on some of our favorite really cranking praise songs, that's what was happening. And here's what happened. The, the, the priests kind of split, and in, in verse 11 of 2 Chronicles 5, they split back, because you know what was about to take over? Music. The priests left the holy place. All the priests who were present had purified themselves, whether or not they were on duty that day. And the Levites, who were musicians, Asaph, Heman, Jedithan, and all their sons and brothers were dressed in fine linen robes and stood at the east of the altar. What were they doing? Playing cymbals, lyres, and harps. Now, check this out. I have heard people many times, and growing up, we, didn't, we only had piano and organ. When somebody brought drums into the church, me as a kid, I thought, oh, drums, that's the greatest thing in the whole world. And, you know, some of our older people go, drums, I can't believe we have drums in the church. Man, drums have been in the church since the beginning of worship. Drums have been in the church all through the Old Testament. Praise him on the cymbals. Praise him on the high-sounding cymbals. Praise him on the loud, crashing cymbals. We're all about music. Let's sing and lift our voices. Look at what happens. They were joined by 120 priests who were playing trumpets. You ever have a trumpet play on Sunday? And you go, and, and, man, that hurt my ears. That was too loud. Let's get a grip, friends. 120 trumpets in a place with probably no inside acoustic treatments. These, this temple was probably made of rock, stone, marble. Can you imagine the echo of 120 trumpets? See, God is worthy of our loudest praise. The trumpeters, let's look at this. The trumpeters and singers perform together in unison to praise and give thanks to the Lord. You know, our worship coordinators, uh, Chuck, with, with putting the worship uh, coordinating in the band, and Shannon trying to lead the, the, the singers and the band and everybody and trying to lead all you, we're wanting to do that in unison. And sometimes it sounds pretty good, and we do it, we pull it off. But we want to do that in unison the way they did it in the Bible. And so that's why we work hard to have music and worship on Sunday mornings. Accompanied, they sing, perform together in unison to praise and give thanks to the Lord. Look at this. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments. We're simply being obedient. We're being obedient and following the example of God. Here's what they did. They Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, they raise their voices and praise the Lord with these words. He is good. His faithful love endures forever. What happened when they were lifting their music and their songs? Wow, this is impressive. At that moment, a thick cloud filled the temple of the Lord, and the priests could not continue their service because of the cloud, for the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple of God. Every Sunday when we get together to do worship, we pray that the presence of the Holy Spirit will be here with us as we worship and praise. You know, some of you who are a little bit more conservative or don't have a lot of maybe interaction or, or expression in your church experience, you know, you're around folks and, you know, we have people from every denomination that you can think of that worship with us. And sometimes you'll hear somebody go, woo, or you have somebody clap their hands or raise their hands. This is just in response to worship. You may be doing it inside. But nevertheless, there has always been a response to worship. And we pray that there will be the feeling of the Holy Spirit come upon us all. You know, the entire book of Psalms, you know what they actually are? Songs. There are 150 songs. Every one of them were performed as songs. They weren't read. Now, they were beautiful poetry. We have beautiful poetry in, in, in the Psalms. But they were all put to music, songs of sorrow, songs of praise, songs of bitterness, songs of joy, songs of victory, songs of discouragement, songs expressing deep emotions. You can read them in the Psalms. It's actually been said that sometimes 
communication with God can be better done through song than even the spoken word. Now, I can tell you this. Let me tell you how powerful singing is. I have found myself and heard other people singing songs that, they, that are popular on the radio, and maybe they've sung them all their life. I mean, there are certain songs that come on, and I look in, the, in, in Kroger or, or in the mall or whatever, and a song comes on, and I see people mouthing the words. In fact, if they're popular songs, they're not always glorifying to God. And so sometimes I see and hear even fully devoted followers of Christ singing along with songs that are so catchy and they know the words, they don't even realize, hey, what I just sang was actually adultery or premarital stuff that is supposed to be reserved for marriage, supposed to be reserved for marriage or, or doing this or doing that. And I'm singing these songs but is that something that should fill my mouth? Because you know what the Bible says? From out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we've got to sometimes make sure that when we're singing along lustily, I don't mean in lust, but with strength and power to these songs, do we realize what we're really saying? You see, music is powerful. Sometimes I, I remember one time I was singing a funny little song that could have been interpreted a little different way. And Pastor Timor, when he was our worship pastor, he says, he stopped me. And he's, it was during practice. He goes, Nate, do you realize that that could be misinterpreted? And I go, no, I didn't even think about it because it was just a song that, you know, was just a funny little ditty of a song. He says, cool it. So I said, thank you, Pastor Timor, for telling me that because I was involuntarily singing. Music is powerful. In fact, some of the richest people in the world have made fortunes by what? Music and singing. Martin Luther says, music is the art of the prophets that can calm the agitations of the soul. It is one of the most magnificent and delightful presents God has given us. Now, I want to tell you a story. We're not going to read it. It's found in Acts chapter 16, and, and you can go home and read this if you want. But one day, when Paul and Silas were preaching, and the Acts of the Apostles are the doings, what the Apostles were up to, and that's why it was written. So we could see, after the filling of the Holy Spirit, what happened to the Apostles, you know, as they added more leaders like Paul and Silas and others to preaching the gospel? We have all kinds of stories. So one day, Paul and Silas were going down to the place of prayer, and they were met by a slave girl. And the slave girl was managed by a team uh, of handlers because she so happened to have a demon inside of her. You can read the story. It's a magnificent story. And that demon gave her the ability to predict the future, to do fortune telling. So it, when, when Paul and Silas were walking up, she said, and, and I quote, these men are servants of the most high God and they have come to tell you how to be saved. Well, hey, the devil was getting uh, her to rile up the Roman people there, the Roman officials. And so they, the handlers, spoke to the officials and they said, look, this, this guy, these guys preaching the gospel of Jesus as evidenced by our slave girl that we're handling uh, that does fortune telling and all kinds of other stuff, they're bothering us. So we've got to take control of this. And so what happened? They lied about what Paul and Silas were doing and they got the officials to beat them with a rod. They just beat them. They stripped them there in the public square and they beat them with rods until they were just black and blue. Then they put them in the inner dungeon of the, of the prison, put their feet in stocks so they couldn't get away and left them there. At night, at midnight, what did Paul and Silas start to do? They started singing. How about you? You've just been beaten. You're black and blue, and, and, and it was a false accusation. And you're put in stocks, and you're in the inner dungeon, probably no food, no water. They started singing. Why? Because when you have the love of God in your heart, stuff wells up inside you. Maybe you're not a singer. Maybe you say, well, I'm not a singer. I don't like to sing. Well, we're going to give you a solution for that in just a moment. But what happened then is... The, there was an earthquake. They were singing. The praise is inhabited by God. When we praise God, he inhabits that praise. It so happened that they, their chains fell off because an earthquake happened. It shook the building. The chains fell off. It was pitch black in there. And so what happened was the jailers back then, if they lost control and, and their prisoners escaped, 
they would kill them. So the jailer there said, you know what, I'm going to die. And my prisoners are gone. I see the chains. And in the dark, they didn't see Paul and Silas were still there. So he drew his sword to kill himself. And Paul probably screams out, don't, dude. Maybe not dude. But that he could. Don't. Why? Because we're still here. The jailer was so moved by what had happened. He had heard their singing. He felt the earthquake. The chains fell off. And now he said, look, you guys are coming with me to my house. So he packed him up, took him to his house. He himself bathed their wounds. They told him about Jesus, the real message. Instead of what was trumped up against them, they said, here's what we're telling people. And the jailer believed and his whole household met Christ. Now that's pretty something, isn't it? You see, God made us musical beings. Now I want to give you some advice from Paul. Ephesians chapter 5. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, key in on this verse. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourself, making music to the Lord in your hearts. You see, even if it doesn't come out, make music, make melody in your heart. Say, God, I love you. You can just say it over and over. Thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for loving me. I want to praise you. Please accept the praise. Or if you want to open your mouth and you want to sing and it's off key, fine. Why do you think the Bible says make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Hey, all of us up on stage here, sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes I play wrong notes. Sometimes the singers might be a teeny bit off. We hope it doesn't happen very often. But that's not the point, you guys. It's not a polished performance. It is a praise to God. Now, we don't want to be distracting, so we work hard to present what we do in an excellent way because Christ is deserving of the best. But what we do here is an expression of what is inside of us. The power that, that conquered sin and the praise to God for his indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. That keeps us from going off the deep end. What a reason to sing. There's an old hymn, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eyes on the sparrow and I know he watches me. Is that your song today? Let's pray. Thank you, God, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for how Paul and Silas could sing even after being beaten. Why could they do that? Because they knew that they were beaten because they talked about Jesus. And they were honored to, have, to take punishment, to take suffering, to share in the suffering like Jesus did, to be forgiven, to forgive our sins. And, and they wanted to be counted honorable in that way as well. And so God... Today, as we sing and make melody in our hearts, as we worship today during communion and, and end, our, end our morning of worship with a praise song, we just want you to inhabit that today. Understand that we love you and we want to express that in Christ's name. Amen. And now as we uh, prepare to follow Christ's example in communion, <clears throat> I want to read for read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 for you. It says in chapter in verse 23 Paul says for I received from the Lord what I passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, "This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me." In the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, "This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me." For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. So as we prepare, I'm going to bless the, the elements of communion. And then you can stand and exit to your left to the station in front of you. And go back to your seat and take the elements as you wish. Father God, we just thank you and we praise you for the sacrifice of the body and the blood through your son Jesus. We know what it represents. We don't take it lightly. Forgive us of our sins as we prepare our hearts to follow his example in communion. It's in your son's name. Amen. You can come and take your elements.
try to make the air that I breathe come back out and praise God. And um, Pastor Nate's sermon really kind of hit home for me. I don't think you guys know this, but back when I was in high school, I was a senior, and one of my teachers, my home ec teacher, we had home ec back then, and she said, what are you going to do when you graduate? I don't know. No one in my family had ever been to college, so I didn't think that was it. <laughs> I said, I don't know. She said, well, what do you like to do? I'm like, well, I like to sing. 
She said, oh, my husband's a music producer. Sing for me. So I did. And she said, I didn't know you could sing like that. Okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> she said, I'm going to talk to my husband. We're going to get you on record. Oh, I'm a kid. I'm a senior in high school. I'm thinking, wow, that was easy. <laughs> it was great. So I had a meeting with him, and we talked about his idea of what he wanted me to sing. He wanted to bring back all the old goodies. I'm like, oh, sounds good. That sounds like you know something I can sing. And then the first song he told me he wanted me to sing <laughs> was not something that is um, pleasing to God. And so I just looked at him and said, I'm sorry, I don't, think I, can, I don't think I can do that. Well, why? So I explained it to him, and he looked at me like a very young, naive, dumb girl <laughs> that was passing up on a really great opportunity. And I said, I have to try to live my life pleasing to God, and when I breathe that air in, it's got to come out, praise to God. So I turned him down, and <laughs> he let me know how silly this was. So I'm not famous. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> but I'm famous in his eyes. And today we get to, together, praise him. And we're going to do that one more time before we leave today. So if you want to stand and really sing to God, because that, those ears that hear his praise, that's the most blessed audience that we ever need to have. We don't need lights on a stage. We don't need fame. We don't need tickets that are sold out, concerts. We need Jesus. We need, to, we need to breathe him in and breathe him back out. So let's praise him today. You guys ready? Yeah, let's do it.
stop the Lord Almighty? Oh, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Oh, who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power. to leave this place today, let us not forget that God has blessed us richly. And when we sing with our hearts, our minds, our souls, he is hearing and he loves what he's hearing. I pray this blessing upon you that anything that you go through this week, joyful, sorrowful, anything in between, that we sing to God. Thanks for worshiping with us today. We look forward to seeing you again next week.